everybody. Happy New Year to you all. Hope everybody had a fantastic holiday. Christmas and New Year's. It's been two weeks since I was here live with you. Welcome back. I uh, hope everybody's keeping warm with, with the Arctic temps and things and blizzards that's been going on for the last couple weeks. It's for us, it's Christmas. Um, we're in a heat wave now. It got into the 20s today. <laughs> <laughs> it really felt warm. <laughs> Let me tell you, after being below zero and in the teens, um, warming trend. So hopefully that's going to be taking place this week for all the rest of you too across the states and get out of this, this whatever we are in that is so horrendous even florida they were wearing hats and stuff that got down like to the 30s or so florida. anyway i have my first show of 2014 and i am so excited because i have not done a show yet about this topic but we've had questions from you viewers and listeners out there in the past. And we're going to be talking tonight for the next hour about the Lenormand. And I have a very special guest on this evening to tell us all about it, all along with her new upcoming deck. And she's done past ones. I have... Kendra Kurtzlo with me this evening, and hey. hi, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited because I have not, as I said, have not had anybody on that to discuss specifically the Melanormans uh, right. deaths out there. And They're getting really popular. <laughs> Yes, they are. Now, you've done several. You've co-created Under the Roses, the Halloween, the Yuletide, and the Lenormand Silhouette. Right. And you have your own independent deck, the Pendra's Vintage Petite Lenormand. Correct. <laughs> now, um, I, I, and I love them. I don't own any... Lenormand, yours or anybody else's actually yet. Um, but I I love the the ones that I've seen on, on your page you. and I love the silhouettes too because Thanks. that has such a Victorian look. Yeah. Now there's a little funny story about that deck. It was initially supposed to be an in, another independent deck. Um, and by me, and Katrina looked at it and said, you're not capable of doing this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> at least she was honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we went again in another partnership. <laughs> yeah. That's when you know you have a true friend, when they're honest and blunt and to the point. <laughs> yep. What most people don't know is Katrina's my daughter. Okay. Okay, yep. that so. is really neat. So did you get her into it, or did she get you into it? <laughs> I got her into it. She's um, she's studying to be an art major, and uh, she's worked in graphic design for a while. She's been an artist all of her life. She's had a pen in her hand. It's been her favorite toy, even when she was little, you know, so... Um, she's really amazing, really, really amazing. So I got, I just, you know, it was just natural because I'm into the cards <clears throat> and she's an artist and I dabble in art and, um, it just, the first, the first set that we did just came about really strangely. There weren't that many decks available then. We had, uh, Melissa Hill's Postmark Lenormand was out and there were a few in the stores. There was Blue Owl and um, Piatnik and, um, you know, a few others. But the, it just wasn't a common thing. You know, it was just the beginning of the resurgence when um, we started putting our deck together. So. 
So the, the questions are coming into the chat room already, but before I get to those, because it's a question that has come up, you know, in the past on, on other shows. But um, how did you get started? Oh, so this is interesting. And I really haven't had a chance to tell people how I got started outside of little groups. So this is neat well, for me. <laughs> yeah. So um, I moved to Michigan from California about four and a half years ago. I was already in the cards at that time, but I wasn't doing Lynn Normand. I was um, kind of exploring tarot a little, but I was working with some Oracle decks mostly. And uh, when I moved here, I thought it would be smart to get involved in communities of like minds. So I got involved with the Detroit Area Tarot Guild, and um, that is associated with the Boston Tea Room. They're really great people over there. They're down in Ferndale about a half an hour from me. And so what became later, one of my good friends, Danya Smith, introduced me to the cards. She went to Reader Studio. She brought some of the cards back. The, the minute I saw them, I was in love. I just became, like, obsessed. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I spent months researching, and, um, and I, I finally said, we've got to make a deck. We've got to make a deck. Our art is kind of unique, and I think this would be a really good match. And so that's what happened. And gosh, that was three years ago. <laughs> I'm not sure when. The deck came out September 2012, the first deck. Nice. So uh, we worked on it all that year. And uh, it, was a, it was really an adventure because I didn't really know anyone in the Lenormand community. And other than the Facebook groups, which I was involved in, uh, but I didn't really know anyone face to face, and um, everybody I knew was online. <laughs> so, you know, for me, that first push of "Are we going to share this?" <laughs> was a little nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I so bad. And then, yeah, and then things just went from there, you know. Now, did you read the tarot? Or yeah, and the prior to getting into the Linda Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I, read, I do readings. I do. I typically use both systems in my readings um, because for me, I get a lot of information about their outside world from Lenormand and like what's really going on with them with the tarot. And if I do the reading side by side, it's always got these um, similar lines and I can like lock them in and people are just baffled about how much we can really tap into and it what I love about reading for people is that it gives them so much clarity about their life you know I don't do um I'm a real practical reader I don't I don't like get too much into future but I will guide them like if you do this this is likely the outcome if you do that that's likely the outcome but I won't give like um, hardcore fortune telling, telling type of readings and when I get Lenormand readings if someone hasn't come in for specifically reading I typically teach them how to use it as we go so that I'm not giving them the reading I'm guiding them and giving their self a reading does that make sense okay now the one thing when it's been come up as a topic in general because I haven't done a full show on it as I said until tonight um what has been stated is the main difference between the norman and tarot is you get more of a direct answer than you do with the tarot do you find that to be the case i think that's uh, a little bit generalizing but for the most part that's accurate um because it's more pointed. The answers are more pointed, and the way that it's read is different than tarot. Um, a lot of people argue, you know, they're, they're really two different systems, and they are for the most part, but they are still divination systems, and you're still pulling out cards and making a reading from them. The difference is that when you read from tarot, even if you study tarot, you're using a lot of intuition, 
and a lot of vision in your readings. And um, every time you extract, um, like put two cards together, it can mean something different. When you do Lenormand readings, it's very analytical. You have usually pre, uh, pre designated meanings for each card. And it's more like a puzzle, putting pieces of a puzzle together, or even a math equation, if you want to get really simplistic about it. You can say this card means this, and this card means that, and if A and B equal C, what is the obvious C? So uh, it's in that respect, I love it. It's because if I want a really clear answer, yes, I'm going to pull out my Lenormand cards. Absolutely. But if I want to really focus on my inner being and um, the development of my life or my spirituality or um, my growth as a person, my tarot cards are going to be on the table as well. Okay. Now, when you're reading the Lenormand, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, it's less things less busyness going on as far as details and background. If you're right. dealing with a horse, you have a picture of just a horse. Right. A, a cow. You can see that I got a sun here. Yeah. Just a sun. Right. right. So each deck then, because like with Tarot, it follows a standard system, 78 cards, you have the majors, you have the arcana, you have the core cards, you have the four suits. Um, right. Is there any kind of set standards for Len Lenormand? Yes. Yes, there uh, are typically 36 cards, and um, they don't really waver too much in their description, their title. For instance, the fish is always a fish or some fish, or the key is a key. Um, and they do have the card correspondences on them. They are made up of a playing card deck similar to tarot. Tarot has an extra suit and the uh, pages that are extra from a card deck, as most people know. This is less a playing card deck. so. Number two through five in the pips are not included into the deck. And that's how we get 36 cards. And um, a lot of people don't read with um, the playing card correspondence. I'm looking for an easy one to read. Here's the bear. It's really hard to read in the stock, but I've got the ten of clubs here. And more advanced readers will use the card correspondent um, to decide if there is something applicable in that area. But for the most part, beginners do not use it. They use, maybe they might use the card number, but that's more for placement. But they'll use, you know, the title and what it means. So there's different ways of getting these meanings, and they're called traditions or schools. And they come from different areas where Lenormand grew in Europe. Uh, for instance, they're like the Belgian-German system, French, Swiss, Dutch, um, and the list goes on. And a lot of people that study Lenormand elect to follow one set of these um, prescribed keywords to describe their card. I am very untraditional in that way, even though I read the cards in a traditional manner. I use personally ascribed meanings because um, when you're introducing a beginner to Lenormand, it's really hard to explain. Go study these systems and then pick one and start using it, you know. So I show them how to use the cards and then I encourage them, if they like it, to then follow these other traditions. Uh, I do not follow a specific tradition. I'm familiar with all of them. In our Under the Roses deck, we use keywords from almost every tradition so that people can um, pull out what makes sense to them. Because a lot of people, when they look at a bear, they see an animal. You know, they might see their animal totem. They might see 
something really heavy, they might see something aggressive. So typically our decks come with suggested keywords. I suggest people pick one, two, three keywords for each card and that they have those keywords ready when they begin um, begin their process of reading. So that they have the keywords and the keyword is heavy, which is A, plus if we have a fish, to me this is like lucrative, you know, um, heavy plus lucrative equals what? So they can just figure it out more like an equation. So it's actually simple. <laughs> So now, okay, question to be, you know, because this is new to me and, and the viewers as far as the show doing this. Right. Um, you're going to have, like, you have with the tarot, you have your set names mm -hmm. for the cards. The cards. To make do is that the same in the Lenormand? Do the, yes. do all decks are going to have a bear and or yes. and a fish and the sun and a fish and a key and a lady and a gentleman? They might be called lady and man or woman and man, but you know you get the idea. I mean, Carol decks vary very slightly. Lenormand decks also vary very slightly, even less so than Carol. So um, typically. The first card in the deck is the rider, and um, I don't know if I have one right here, but uh, it's, you know, it's always the same. The first card is the rider, or the cavalier. The second card is always the clover. Um, the moon is always number 32. So um, it is really like a set, it is a set system. Right, okay. And I thought just occurred to me as... You're holding them up, Kendra. And in a way, to me, you know, not being an artist or, or anything mm -hmm. like that, I can't even do stick figures. <laughs> but I would think it would be harder coming up with ideas and creative ways for a Norman deck as opposed to a Tarot deck because you have detail with the Tarot. Right that you can add and bring out to make each deck different from the other where with the Lenormand because a fish is a fish you don't do the details it's minus all the backgrounds and things like that it has to be I would think harder to yeah in a, I, in a respect I, it is um, because there are so many versions of tarot out there, and really, other oracle decks don't usually have like spin offs like tarot does, but Lenormand does. And it, it's there's hundreds of decks out there, and um, they they all read very similarly. Um, but if you were to pick up the Druid Craft and put it next to a Rider Weight, you're gonna have like two different experiences reading tarot, right? Um, but you may or may not with the Lenormand. So for me, the detail that goes into it, like this is from my vintage deck, and these are vintage images, and the process of making them is different. The themes are, um, it's really hard to come up with a theme that's different, you know, it because they're they're really simple, and um, the artwork, you would think the artwork would be more simple, and it is in a way. The, the, the roadblock in it is that, like, how do we get creative with that, you know? And that's where we came up with our theme, our original theme, which was Under the Roses Lenormand. And um, we wanted to also show our really super simple side, because you get Lenormand readers that want only, you know, the simple one image that's all they want to see. They want it very simple. But then you get other people who are looking for something a little bit more creative. And this one is normally just a, um, a coffin. And in this deck, we made it the grave. So it's um, so that's why we finished with Lenormand Silhouettes, was because we wanted to show people like um, 
just how much the meaning can pop with the symbol image. So that's now, why we know. Now, of the clover, I right away can't think of luck. Right, and that is most people's first response to the card. And in most of the traditions, that is one of the meanings of the card. Another a great meaning for this card would be opportunities. So, you know, unforeseen opportunities. Here's the book. And this is in our Lenormand Silhouettes deck. And um, the book for a lot of people, um, they come up with different things for it. A lot of people, it's secrets, or they'll read it as, if the book's open, it's secrets you find. If the book's closed, it's secrets that are, like, really kept locked in. Um, but for a lot of people, for me, when I read it, it's usually about study or education, history, journaling, that sort of thing. So um, there, there, let me pull up my roses deck. Yes, I love that uh, too. Thanks. Now, I know like you were talking about there's the set couple systems to read with. Now, Tarot has that, you know, tons of different things that you can do and lay out. I am personally, I've never been able to use them. One of the main things, like new readers with the Tarot do, right away they want to learn, what, let's do the Celtic cross, because that's something that not everybody does. When I go to do any of those set known spreads, I'm too confined. Right. And I cannot, I found myself, instead of being able to read, I was just giving out keywords. I couldn't get it to mesh to get the proper info because each position's for a specific thing. Right. Um, so I just... So you're more on the know. creative or visionary side of reading. Right. But for some people, they don't, they don't naturally go there. And for them, they study about tarot, but there's still something like they can't quite connect. And those people usually will find that they will connect with Lenormand. Now, when I'm showing people how to read with Lenormand, the people that are um, more creative readers, I do suggest they use personally ascribed meanings. It's called PAM, and um, that's where they select their own meanings because then they can be creative about what does it mean to them. The trick is, though, um, you know, well, let me back up for a second. A lot of people will not like that I said that. <laughs> but, you know, uh, there's a good reason for it. There's a, there's a history to Lenormand that we don't want lost. And there, those traditions are there because they're long and tested and, you know, they come out of certain areas. But, but to move on so that beginners can really understand, when you set your own meanings, you connect with the card more. And it means the same thing to you every time you see it. And that's really the key with Lenormand. When you see the card, it should mean the same thing. Because if you know it, and you know it, and you know it, that's how you get those clear readings. And it's not the same way with tarot. Tarot is more, it's more like water. You know, it moves with what needs to be found. Lenore is not like that. It's very direct. So the more, the more clarity that you have with the cards, the more um, direct your readings would be. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. Now, is there, since, since it's more direct, is there specific things to, as a client coming, that you wouldn't do a reading using the Lenormand? I cannot ever get that out properly. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you know, there's different ways to say Lenormand, too, and that's, that's a subject yeah. in itself. So anyways, to, to get to your question, um, re, re, tell me the question again. <laughs> um, is there more specific questions? 
Oh, yes. You're so I treat it in that respect. I treat it just like a tarot reading. I don't read the deeds, you know, death, disease, disaster, divorce. I won't, I won't read them. Even if I see them, I have seen it. It's uncomfortable, but I, I won't do it. It's just, um, it's just a standard I apply to myself. Uh, I don't, I suggest that for everybody that, that learns Lenore from me or from, you know, anything that I write because I don't, um, I don't think that divination needs to be tragic. There, something good can come out of any negative outcome. And uh, really, as a reader, we have a responsibility to pull that out because something can be gained. Um, oftentimes, when um, the querents come in and they talk to me, they are surprised because at the end of my readings, I will wrap up the reading and I will tell them very directly, are you going to walk away from this opportunity and make changes? Is this going to affect your life or is this just going to be something fun you did once? If the choice is yours, I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm not even going to remember the reading. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so, um, but I really, I'm a Taurus. And I really want people to walk away with an experience that they remember and some uh, something almost tangible they can ponder whether or not that they've understood something about themselves when they leave. And um, I, using the combined systems for me is wonderful. Typically, if I'm doing like parties, let's say I'm doing parties and I do 15-minute readings, which are fast, I will lay out five tarot card or five Lenormand cards and three tarot cards and um, they're almost always in synchronicity it's really unusual to see even though that they're completely different systems and they read totally different ways uh, when I do you know hour-long readings I get into much bigger spreads and things, things like that but um, I uh, I love Lenormand <laughs> I love Lenormand I love how direct it is I love tarot, of course, and so for me, uh, the combination is just that, um, like, one-two punch, you know. <laughs> so, right. I'm trying to pick up questions here on the um, chat board. Somebody's hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to um, open up the phone lines as well. We want to do sure. that before time runs out. Um, sure. So they can call in with, with their questions, or if they want... A quick reading like I do here from time to time on the show um, and then can see firsthand how it works um, um, I have to warn you though I'm probably going to guide the person right. <laughs> so, okay as long as everybody knows when they call in um, for those who are new to the show welcome and there's a couple guidelines when you're calling in, if you're calling in for a reading, we need a specific question. You can't just do even just a general topic for time purposes, of course. So uh, we need a direct question. We need the volume turned down if you have the show on when you call. Otherwise, we're not going to hear you. We're going to just be getting the feedback. And we also don't have the hold ability. So if we're on the line with the caller, we need you to please wait until we're through with that caller before calling in. So phone lines are open, and you can give us a call and speak to Kendra and myself. Um, you said you're in the beginning of the show, Kendra. Your first that came out in did you say twenty? Well, yeah, September of uh, 2012 was our Under the Roses Lenormand deck, and that is the deck that U.S. Games picked up, and so um, it was self-published, uh, and it should be out this probably this spring, is my guess, maybe late spring. It's in the printing process right now. All the editing is done, so we've been working on it for quite some time, and the people at U.S. Games are just amazing. I love them. They're awesome. Yeah. I have a caller so, on the line, so I'm going to cut you off right there, Kendra. Robin, okay. hi. Hello. 
How are you? Happy New Hi, Year. Robin. Hi, yes, Happy New Year. I just love your deck. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. The, the roses deck? Yes, lovely. Yeah. Beautiful thank artwork. You. Thank you. Um, I have a question, if you can pick up on anything. I'm sure. looking to invest in another piece of real estate in a mm -hmm. home, and I was wondering if you have a feel for what area I should go in uh, geographically. Oh, geographically. So what are your Be options? Nice. Be specific. Oh, any place, really. Any state. Any state. So yeah. this is the kind of question that we want to narrow in on a little bit because Lynn Armand is so direct. So if you have one or two places in mind, that um, would be very helpful. Well, uh, state-wise, let's see, Connecticut or okay. Pennsylvania. Okay. So and there's options to go further deck? south. Do you have a Lynn Armand? Uh, no, I don't use it, no. Okay. So I'm going to shuffle the deck, and I'm um, telling the deck as I'm shuffling the deck that Robin is card 29, which is the lady. <clears throat> and I'm going to pull. I'm actually going to pull two sets of three for Connecticut and Pennsylvania, okay? Wonderful. Okay, so you got two different situations here. So I got the sickle, which is, uh, it's a snipe. I'm sure you know what a sickle is. So yeah. typically for me, this is a cutting off card. Would you describe this card as a cutting off card? Oh, yes. Yeah. No, okay. I know what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell, can you tell me? Can you tell me what? Can I tell you? Is? Yeah. I'm a reader. I'm a reader, okay. so I wanted to see what you were getting. Okay. So then I had the ship. So to me, mm -hmm. ship is travel or adventure. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. And then I have the dog, which to me is uh, usually loyalties or friendships. Mm-hmm. Okay, you agree with that. Okay, yeah. so for Pennsylvania, we have the moon. Now, a lot of people get different impressions from the moon. This isn't quite like tarot. To me, this is uh, shadows or things that aren't clear. But I need to know what it means to you. What it means to me? Yeah, just well, give me a not being clear as far as which, as far as which place to go, that's what's not clear. Unclear is okay. And then I have the clover, which is my luck card. I'm sure you probably agree with that. Mm -hmm. And then I have the garden. Okay. So mm -hmm. the garden to me is like social things, maybe networking, meeting lots of people. Um, does that sound like it would suit you? That's everywhere. Yeah, oh. very sociable. Okay. So let's look at Connecticut first. So here are the cards, okay? And we read them like a mm -hmm. sentence. So the first thing that happens, we're gonna read them just like this, okay? This is like the answer, and then we add on to what it means. This is the cutting off, and a cutting off is very uncomfortable. It's, um, you feel like things are over. It's um, usually pretty sad. Then we have the ship, which is adventure, so that's like, to me this is moving. It's, um, it's a long move or an adventure. So th what's interesting is it ends with the dog. So if you could give me one sentence, what do you think this would mean? I'll tell you what I think. Me? Yeah. That's oh, I, I wanted you to read it. <laughs> I will, don't worry. One sentence? Sentence. I, I'm not sure what you're going for. Okay, so let's just start with this then. Did this give you the impression that this is like a no? 
Or no, to what? To Connecticut. So you're going specifically for Connecticut? Yeah. Okay, well, I, I don't know what the note would be. Okay. Other than so let, me, let me get back to not to go there. I'm being too confusing. <laughs> so for me, the sickle is things cutting off. I don't really like to see that as the first card because it tells me that it's more like a um, situation, even though it's a, like a fresh start, it's a situation that's not good because you're cutting things off. There's something involved, more personal here, I think. It is definitely uh, an adventure. Well, movie. it's snow and cold. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. And then, but, you know, the, the great thing is it ends with the dog, which is like friendship. So you yeah. may have a really, uh, find a really great friend there. Do you have a great friend there? I, I have an extensive following there. Yeah. Okay. So that's what that's about. So I don't yeah. think it's necessarily a no. I just think that the experience isn't going to start the way that you want it to. Does that make sense? I, in, in point, I, mm -hmm. I pulled mm -hmm. a story. I did what you did, but of course with the tarot. Um, for Connecticut, strength reversed, Knight of Cups reversed, and then temperance. Right. And similar to right. what you are saying with the Connecticut, but my main thing that I'm getting here, uh, as Robin, in the Connecticut choices, don't do it for any sort of specific relationship. Friendship. Right or significant other or right or whatever Do yes you know? i can't move there just because of friends yes yeah and that right. is prominent here as the second card um mm -hmm. it seems that out of you know you got strength here reversed as the first and then the knight of cups was reversed and then the third card with temperance upright so it seems like it's going to bring you balance and peace yes. but it has to be for you right mm -hmm. Not for yes. i like how those cards lay out because the the ending it ends with temperance so mm -hmm. and i think strength reversed is a really good similarity to uh the circle um Mm -hmm. it's, it is being strong, but it's in a really negative light because things have happened that you didn't expect it. So, um, so I like the way that there's a similarity there. So let's mm -hmm. go to let's go to Pennsylvania. Okay. So we start with the moon. So if you go well, to well, Misha wants me in Pennsylvania. Huh? Yes, I want you. <laughs> I said Misha wants me in Pennsylvania. Uh huh. So if you choose Pennsylvania, things start out really unclear. You're, you know, you're not gonna be able to like constantly see the light. It's like the moon in in its reality, where there's times where it's really luminous, and there's times when it's really dark, and there are mm -hmm. cycles, and those cycles will be experienced. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So then it moves into the luck card so to me this is um you finding great opportunities there um i really like seeing this following the moon because even though you're not sure about what's going on ultimately this is a really great card to have because mm -hmm. you're going to um be surprised and probably either get lucky or my usually it's opportunities when i read there you go mm -hmm. <laughs> Card that I pulled for Pennsylvania. So. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and so the last card is the garden, which I like because it's kind of like the it's kind of like the period to the sentence, right? And it mm -hmm. says social networking, lots of people. People usually enjoy the garden. It might be a literal garden. Do you literally garden? Yes, I do. Okay, you're going to really love the garden there. And um, so this is going to have like a twofold meaning. Um, and uh, I think that this would be a really beneficial move for you 
uh, if I were, they both have their strengths and their weaknesses, but if I were to choose one for myself, I would prefer to take the one with the clover in it because mm -hmm. um, it's going to turn out okay, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one is going to be a little bit more of an adventure and it's going to have a really rough start. <laughs> a rough start? start? The, sure. the one to Connecticut, the one to Connecticut, see, because of the sickle? Mm -hmm. So if you if you move to Connecticut, there's a rough start. Yes. Okay. And if you move, it, to it's actually Virginia, meant to be because I'm I'm flipping properties, so it, all of them oh. actually would be because I'm taking something that is devastated. <laughs> so and I'm okay. turning it into a plus. Right. Okay. So that's not bad after all. So that really works mm -hmm. out. So they both work out. Yeah. They both work out. It's so you have to decide which reading you like better. It's kind of really what it boils down to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this was my three. Oh. Yeah. It was the two of pentacles, the first card reversed. If okay. the last two were both cups and they were not right. It was the it's hard to look at them backwards. <laughs> the nine of cups and the mm -hmm. seven of cups upright. So it seems, you know, chaotic and, and lots of things going on and, you know, you're in decision, but the clarity is, is there with the Seven of Cups. And mm -hmm. this is, you know, this the center of the life of the party. He, he's the entertainer. He shines. He makes sure everything around yes. is, is fine and content. I like it. I like the reading. What do you think? Very, Robin? very good and very interesting. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hope it helps you, Robin. <laughs> okay. You take you care. care. Don't let the decision be based on someone else. That was right. that's the main thing that I agree with that. I agree with that. I don't see anyone else in these cards. <laughs> <laughs> That was Thank you. Fun. Thank you. Thanks for calling, Robin. Thank um, you. What I was going to say and point out, your first act that's being remade is the Under the Roses. Right. And that was just in 2012. So right. since then, you have a total... What five more besides? Five. We have five total, right? We did five decks in one year. It was amazing. I can't believe that we did that. One so, year. In one year, we put out five decks. Can you believe it? Almost to the day, our Lenormand silhouettes came out in September too. So it was a uh, really shocking, and um, the story about the U.S. Games is pretty cool. I'll show that real quick. Yes. Um, so, uh, as you know, we were self-published, but before we did that, in the early phases of our work, I sent in submissions, and um, I was in Whole Foods getting groceries, um, and when Stuart Kaplan called me, and <laughs> he's like, this is Stuart Kaplan from U.S. Game. Do you know who I am? I'm like, uh... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, the funny thing is, is they hadn't seen our work in its completion. They saw four images. It had gotten buried on um, someone's desk. And um, then um, they, when they saw it, they called me. And on the phone, I directed them to the website. And they saw the images, and they were sending a contract right then. So it was just amazing. It was really amazing. <laughs> I, 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 I've turned in so many submissions in my life. I never thought that I would actually get that call, you know? <laughs> now, anybody wanting to do... I, I ask this of authors that I have one, too. Uh, since you self-published, and now it's going through the West Games... Is there one that's easier than the other for anybody out there doing a deck, 
hoping to get it published, naturally doing it yourself, you know, it, it's published. So you're you asking know. me about the publishers or are you asking me about the self-publishing companies? But with, in general, between the two, what would you suggest somebody out there that's never had a deck published? Is there one over the other way that they should go with their first deck? Like, it depends on it depends on the person. I mean, we went, we did both. I gave them, you know, so many months to comply, and then we self-published, and um, that was kind of our plan. Others I know go directly to the source. They want it just to go right to um, to a publisher. Even though it's mass marketed, um, there's a lot less money involved um, when you mass market you know, a Lenormand deck because there aren't as many printed. Um, but self-publishing is great for someone who has time to do it. I no longer have time to do it, so we are running out of stock. We literally have six Lenormand silhouettes here and a couple of my vertical Kendra Vintage, Kendra's Vintage Petite Lenormands. The rest, we do have a couple of decks now that we've moved to the Game Crafter, which is a great source for people. Um, but, uh, now I'm so busy with, <clears throat> with everything and it requires a huge dedication to social networking. If you self publish, I have spent so many hours building relationships, supporting other people. Um, you know, part of the, the thing is that, you know, you, like cross promote and, um, you really have to develop good um, a good reputation and good relationships and followers. And so I uh, did that for several months when I got really burned out and I was like, okay, we've got to switch gears. What are we going to do? Because I don't have time for both now. And um, that's when we decided to put a couple of our decks onto the Game Crafter. And I was very resistant to that idea from the beginning. Um, so I went with a, an independent printer, and then I was shipping out the decks. But I spent so much time shipping out the decks and um, dealing with all that is involved with them that uh, it had to stop. <laughs> it just had to stop. So, but uh, I just love the people that find our decks. The, the hardest part is that they send us emails begging us for decks that we don't have. Please, if you just have one more, please send me a deck. And it's, you know, I'm we're very fortunate that we got picked up by U.S. Games. It's really hard to get picked up by a publisher. Yes, it is. So. Now, the ones that you, you said you have silhouettes? Some yeah, this left and the Norman silhouettes, yeah. And which this other one? Um, I have the Kendra's Vintage Petite Lenormand, but I came out in... A different variety of um, sizes, and I have a deck that's got a landscape, you know, oh, wow. horizontal. In are you, um, so are I you have selling some that? Are you a, sell, you're selling them, or you're not holding on? Yeah, them? that's at um, undertheroses.wix.com/slash undertheroses is our like home store, and um, it will direct people to all of our decks. You know, our Facebook pages, where they can find them, if they're on the Game Crafter, if they're here. Um, I really want to um, sell out if, what we have left here because I just don't have time. And I believe it or not, I went back to college. <laughs> <laughs> One of each put aside for me and I'll right. get a whole gift yeah, to for payment and things. All right, so, sure. That'll be my first. The Norman decks. Great. You know, that's awesome. My first guest. So there you go. <laughs> I'm I, really, I feel privileged. Yeah. That's really great that you selected me. I, I really do feel privileged. That's nice. Thank you. I wanted to get that in before they hurry up and get on there and, and start buying it up before the show <laughs> ends and you end up, oh, I don't have any left that quick. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because when we do sell out of a deck, People will be like, you don't have any more? You don't even have one more? <laughs> I'm like, ah, <laughs> I warned you. It was on the site. <laughs> but 
Um, is U.S. Games going to take over all of them? And... No. They're no. just taking over um, the Under the Roses Lenormand. We are in the process of creating Under the Roses Tarot. They, we, we were already in the process of doing that before uh, they picked us up, so that's not included in the contract at this time. And um, we're throwing the idea around about a Kipper deck. But um, right now our focus is Under the Roses Tarot. There are a lot of people very excited because, you know, they could use the decks hand in hand. Yes. And um, I'm excited. I'm thrilled. If you go on to Facebook, you can find Under the Roses Lenormand or Under the Roses Tarot page. Uh, and you can go on Under the Roses Tarot and see some of the images that we've put out. They are really vibrant. They're really yes. alive. They're very detailed. They're very, very tarot. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's still they still have the same feeling as Under the Roses Lenormand's. You know, Under the Roses is, is um, really means like secrets and hiding secrets or uncovering secrets. And um, that. so that's why we chose that theme. I did a lot of research on just um, the title and, and how we're going to put everything together. So we're spending a lot of time doing the same thing with the tarot deck. And we're taking our time. And I know a lot of people are impatient. And I don't blame them. I want one too. <laughs> but we want to do it right. We want to do it right. And, you know, we want it to be amazing when it's done. So. And no idea that that's still in the works. Yes. We only have, at this time, we have, we've got probably two-thirds of the majors sketched. But we only have, I think, six inked. And um, they require a lot more attention, a lot more detail. It takes us four times the amount of time, I'm not exaggerating, to make one tarot card than it does one Lenormand card. The, you know, where there isn't a road blockage is that we don't have to worry about being simplistic. We can be rich with our detail. And so uh, it, we love that part of it. It's a great adventure just to... It's just tough because it's taking a while. We both have very, very full schedules right now. Katrina is, as I said, trying to be an art major. She's already got one degree, and she's after more. And um, on top of that, she's working, and she's raising a five-year-old, and we're creating decks together. <laughs> and so our schedules are very, very tight. But um, we're and still going to have an hour to join me this evening. Would of course. Oh, of great. course. I mean, sure. what a rare opportunity. I've done yeah. some of the um, the shows by phone, but this is my first opportunity to really be on the screen with people and have them see me outside my YouTube videos. And um, I had somebody tell me yesterday that hadn't seen me in years, like, I missed you, so I went on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thrilled that we were able to schedule you to come on and the first Thank show you. of 2014 too to start the year off it's and as things progress and you have new things always feel free and get a hold of me to have sure. you back on um okay. love to have you back Kendra Thanks. and we are out of time so I know <laughs> to find the decks they want to go to under the roses lenormand you said is the under floor. the roses lenormand dot wix dot com slash under the roses so uh i th i see it on the thread the um and then of course if you go to our facebook you can find the links through there so we're all over the place <laughs> Well, I'm so thrilled to, to have, have you come on and to be able to get to with your decks. Yay! <laughs> yeah, I'll get a hold of you as soon as we disconnect and you can send me an okay. invitation. I can get them to you. Okay. Thank you so much again. And yes, thank you for thank having me. me. All Thanks right. to the viewers for joining us. Mm -hmm. Have a fantastic week. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.